Attention, ow, attention, just, ow, my hip, knock it off. Okay, teens, we should be arriving at the Pioneer Village in a few minutes. Has anyone forgotten to give me their permission slip? Ah, my eye! Sit down, arsehole. Hey, now, hey, hey, now, hey! Now, this will all go better if... Kiss my ass, fairy. You listen here. Are you listening? Ouch! <laughs> I ought to kill you, little bastards. Oh, uh, hello. Uh, I'm Mr. Cardi. Uh, we're here from the school. Hello. I'm Miss Bunch, your tour guide. What an intelligent-looking group you have, Mr. Cardi. And what's your name, young man? Please don't step too close to him, Miss Bunch. What do you mean? Listen, I've seen inner-city youths before, and I'm not afraid to talk you, to... You don't understand. Our school's insurance now demands a safety perimeter around Kevin Spencer. It's literally against the rules to get too close to him. Okay. So, why don't we start the tour? Now, how many of you know what it was like to live 200 years ago? I went to Manitoba last summer? How cute. But I'm not talking about the 1850s. I'm talking about the 1750s. It was the first field trip of the semester, and since Kevin didn't much care for learning, he tried thinking about something funny, like monkeys. Visiting our village will be a much better learning experience than watching some TV show. And to help you understand just how much more, here's a video to help you get oriented. Welcome to Ye Old Pioneer Village, a retreat to a simpler time. The days when a man could find life's answers as close as his local barn. I hate my life! I'm not quite dead! Experience the thrill of watching a rug be. See the church where the Underground Railroad brought American slaves to our country to breathe the clean air of freedom, provided it was with their own kind and no one hired them. And we're proud to announce a special addition to the family. Betsy is our second Jersey cow here at the village, and we hope you'll join us in welcoming her when you visit. So don't say those were the days, because those days are here again today, today. Let's move on. Now here's something you don't see very often. It's called a pillory. Bad people were locked up with their heads and hands inside and exposed to public ridicule. See kids? Just like that show, Cops. Sometimes, they were even whipped. See kids? Just like that. Whipped? Hey! Yes, whipped and flogged. You might have heard of it in the Scarlet Letter. A tale of adultery and forbidden passion. Well, let's move on. Uh, I think I speak for everyone when I say, uh, I'd sure like to hear more about this pillory. But there really isn't... Uh, give you five bucks? Uh, ten if you talk real slow. I said let's move on. Hey! See the pigs in the livestock barn, all naked, all the time. Many of the actors who play our pioneer citizens are local volunteers. Follow me, I'll show you. Sure enough, when they got to the milking stable, Kevin saw the familiar faces of his two favorite adult film actors. 
Hey, kids, we're stable hands. Oh, yeah, because whenever you is milking something, you need stable hands. Kevin was confused and worried because he thought that his two favorite porn actors had stopped making films. Hell no, kid. Artistically, we just wanted to play a period piece. So now we work part-time showing people how to milk. Oh, baby. Milk that cow. My God. Hurry, children. Don't look. The town has buildings from many periods in its history. Here's the old movie house from 1915. Town folk would come from miles away to see the films. It's been closed for a while, but everything inside has been perfectly preserved. Even the old projector works. We'll now take a short break for lunch. I encourage you to use ye old bank machine before exploring our gift shop. Um, Miss Bunch, um, do they sell those pillory things? Cowboy with a chronic drinking problem. We're not allowed to sell real liquor here, kid. Here's a soda made up to look like a glass of booze. Uh, I'll even stick an umbrella in it for you. You want to tell this old bag where she can stick her umbrella? Hey, kid. You want some real shine, Whiskey? You just come along with me. Kevin didn't know what to do. He really wanted the booze. But he wasn't so sure it was a good idea to go somewhere with a strange man. On the other hand, Alan didn't seem to give a rat's ass, so Kevin figured he'd better hurry up or the goose would stiff him for a share of the booze. Hey guys! How's it going, ye old ho? Jeez, you ain't gotta be so formal. Just whore will be fine. Now, what can I get for you boys? Two glasses of milk. No alcohol? I didn't know you was allowed to serve adult beverages on the premises. I keep a bottle or two lying around for the staff. Then make it two banana daiquiris. Sweet, baby, sweet. This place is great, ain't it? It'd be a great set for our next film. Oh, baby, yeah. Like a cross between Deep Throat and Gunsmoke. <laughs> I got a full house. That's cheating, baby. Does your piece always smoke after you shoot? It sure is a nice gun. You should see the other gun unpacking when it shoots. Does it also smoke when it shoots? I ain't never looked, baby. Maybe I should take my dress off and check. Wild, wild west, baby. That's fucking gold, baby. Pure fucking gold. Kid, I'm going to tell you the real story of how this town was founded. Don't go believe in all this history they've been feeding you. People all polite and tipping their hats. Ain't nothing like that. Kevin asked how a crazy old drunken bastard like him would know. How would I know? I'm Max, the 2,000-year-old drunk, and I was there. Okay, I'm only 117, 
But I've been the town drunk here ever since there was a town. Except for a while in the 60s when I was into peyote and acid. And I was a town junkie. Hey, kid, I got something in my pants I want you to see. Uh-oh. Aim for the spleen, nudity! Aim for the spleen! It's a picture of me when I was your age. Even Kevin couldn't help noticing the resemblance, which was pretty remarkable because his vision was really blurry on account of his cough syrup buzz. Yep, I was a boy just like you when I came to this town. Except for your stupid looking hat, the world was changing fast. Sigmund Freud proved we all wanted to sleep with our mothers. This town was nothing more than a few shacks and a trading post. And best of all, heroin was as legal as candy. I was using a gram of heroin a day to try and stop smoking cigarettes. <laughs> and I just ended up doing both. Kevin couldn't imagine what it must have been like to buy heroin legally. Oh, sure. That's what the guy who invented the first bicycle was on. Then he sobered up and made the front wheel a lot smaller. Now pay attention. I'm getting to the good part. I got here in 19-odd-6, seeking fame, fortune, and what we at the time called women who would have sex with you for money. But my career options were kind of limited on account of I was dumber than tits on a bull. So I did a stretch as a horse, Steve. Hey, come back with my horse. Then the guy who shovels the crap off Main Street. Eventually, I got work in animal husbandry. I had to get the bulls good and worked up so they could get to romancing the cows. It was lonely, thankless work. Painful and crippling, too. That was before we knew about carpal tunnel syndrome. Speaking of which, you mind opening this fresh bottle for me? Kevin noticed the old man's hands were little more than callous, twisted old stumps, and his back was as crooked as a Montreal cop. Kevin started to wonder what he'd be like when he grew into an old man. The head seems to be staying alive purely by the power of its will. Years of alcohol abuse has preserved it intact. How can we destroy it? I don't know. I thought we might try taking it out to the parking lot and backing over it a few times. Brilliant! Hey, Kevin! Kevin! Are you paying attention? Over here! I'm trying to tell you about the old days. You're in the wrong flashback. Pay attention, idiot! I'll only tell you this as many times as you're willing to listen to it. Yes, it was tough going back then. Days in came, I'd tell off from work and go to the Nickelodeon. And snobs started walking around with their cocaine and fancy snuff boxes, doing their business in what we at the time called toilets. They even shot a newsreel here. All this prosperity, and I was still holding up my pants with a length of barbed wire and getting drunk on swill. I decided then and there that I wanted a piece of the action. Our husbands died from the pox, and now the crown won't give us a widow's pension. Oh, what can we do? Those poor widows needed my help. So after a lot of elbow grease and hard work, in no time we built the best darn whorehouse north of Lake Superior. That's how I met my one true love, Celia. Her eyes sparkled like someone taking a drag off a fiery cigar. After a while, we squirreled away enough to build our own still, and things were looking pretty sweet. But then, that new feller came to town, Reverend Zeke Spencer. He pretended to hate sinners, but the truth was, he was the worst crook that ever gagged on a communion wafer. Now, he was ready to set up his parish in my town, and I was scared. Ah! I ain't too much of a man to admit it, Kit. I shit my pants. No, I mean just now when I said, eh. Now, give me a second, and I'll come back and finish the story. Three, 
and someone's missing. Wait a minute. This class doesn't smell as smoky as it should. Hi, kids. Miss Bunch, one of my students has gone missing. Kevin Spencer. My heavens. I'll notify security and we'll search the area immediately. Kid, wake up! Come on, boy! Okay, so where was I? Oh, yeah, this new fella, Zeke Spencer. I had him pegged as a great load of trouble from the get-go. I'm here to put the fear of God into you hookers. Put more than the fear of God in them. Class A case of crabs, for one thing. They kept working, of course, but it's the principle of the thing that gets me. Then he got all the locals against me with his incredible command of the language. I've been talking to God, and he told me to tell you... <laughs> liquor's bad, except for sacramental wine. We should go wreck that guy still. But the truth was, he didn't want to outlaw alcohol. He was trying to put me out of business so he could control the racket. We're smashing your still, Max. I'm closing down this whorehouse on account of it's wrong. Take all the prostitutes to my house to be saved. Why should I go with you? I need a new milkmaid to churn my butter. Do yourself a favor, Mac. Get your thinning and moonshining out of my town before me and the Lord tear you a new one. Well, I'd had it up to my ass with that hypocritical bastard, so I challenged him to a duel for Celia's hand. Flintlocks at sunrise. The next day, we changed the time to sunset on account of everyone's hangovers. Frontier violence. This will look great in the next newsreel. Flintlock ain't a very reliable gun. Mine blew up in my hand. As I lay there helpless, I told Zeke that someday I'd expose him to the town for the crook that he was. Really? In that case... Zeke figured he had me, but I still had one ace up my sleeve. Hear ye, hear ye! I declare on this day that young squire Kevin Spencer has gone missing! If you find him or his mutilated remains, you'll be rewarded handsomely! Listen, folks, I appreciate the staff helping us out like this. Um, we're looking for a lost boy by the name of Kevin Spencer. How do we know if we found him? He'll probably try to stab you. What does he look like? Well, he's a short kid, hunched over, black baseball cap. Um, kind of looks like Hitler if he was one of the little rascals. That sounds like the kid I was talking to at the brothel. Great. We'll start our search there. Um, Ms. Bunch and I will stay here and organize. Yo, Yo Spencer! Spencer Kevin, Kevin! Come, come on, on, little, little Kevin. Kevin! Maybe we could get his attention with some good vibrations. Play some of our tunes for him. Can't. Left the tape deck back at the milking stable. We'll have to improvise. Uh-huh. <laughs> 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 Zeke thought he had all the liquor and whores in town under his thumb. But I'd have my revenge. That was some real sweet loving, Celia. I better get going. Gonna pick up some kickback money on my way home from the still. Hey, don't forget. You said you'd take me to the new movie house. Jesus Christ. I forgot. I was supposed to be cutting the ribbon at the opening ceremony. Hello, fellow parishioners, and welcome to the new movie house. Now let's see what crazy hijinks that fatty Arbuckle's up to this time. <laughs> hey, 
Jesus, that's my fucking ass. I spied on Zeke Spencer with the newsreel camera and caught every bribe, every beating, every act of carnal lust he committed. Them's all fucking lies. I ain't never done none of that. As mayor, I'd like to thank you for exposing this perverse charlatan. Also, I'd like to request a copy of your movie. Uh, for, for evidence. Uh, me too, please. Without meaning to, I'd invented the first porno movies. Now we were a three-industry town. The last time I saw Zeke Spencer was when his head snapped off, because he was too goddamn fat. After I retired, I pretty much just crawled into a bottle and never came out. Kevin was glad Max had passed out, since Alan had gotten bored and left a long time ago. He decided he'd better go rejoin the others and quickly rifled Max's pockets before going back to class. Hey, Kevin, everyone's been looking for you. Hey, Miss Bunch, we found him. Oh! Oh. oh, yes. Oh. Oh, I'm gonna beat you. you oh, porn man. I, I was, I was just showing Mr. Cardi a typical flogging. Where were you, Kevin? Everyone was worried. Kevin told them about the old drunk who taught him about the town's history. Why? We don't have a character playing the town drunk. How strange. I wonder if. No, no, it couldn't be. A ghost from the past? We found this guy throwing up in your butt, it churn, man. He's an SKP from the asylum. Kevin was going to stick up for Max and tell everyone what really happened. But then he got to thinking about what would happen if you drove a convertible full of big gas cans into a huge container of liquid petroleum.